chasing the police every single day. Say hi, Andy. I'm recording you. I got you. Yes, they are. You know what's really criminal? What's that? Those knee-high socks. I know, but that's what the brown shirts wore. <laughs> This is not for your safety, this is for policing for profit and to illegally track you and illegally look up your stuff. If they find out anything, they will find a reason to pull you over and illegally search you and illegally arrest you. This is out of control government. There's already two lawsuits in Florida to ban these illegal cameras. Smile. There may be a red light camera watching you. The word is that Charlotte County Sheriff Bill Prummel is interested in red light cameras for intersections that have traffic lights. Such a proposal was mentioned in a summary of a recent public meeting and verified in my subsequent discussion with a county commissioner. The reason reportedly given by the sheriff was that there is a shortage of traffic deputies. I imagine that the income generated would be a secondary, but perhaps alluring incentive, for the ever cash-hungry bureaucracy. One of the primary arguments made for the installation of such devices is that it reduces serious injuries caused by right-angle collisions that may occur when someone runs a red light. There are studies that support this conclusion. No-brainer, then cameras decrease serious accidents and help with the personnel shortage. Let's get them. A bit of research, however, shows the benefits of red light cameras are not so clear-cut, as evidenced by a plethora of other studies. Many municipalities purchasing such devices, studies, or not, found the problems outweighed the benefits and installed the cameras. A review of the findings by the National Motorist Association includes the summary, the preponderance of independent research, in other words, research that was not funded by ticket camera vendors or units of government interested in justifying camera-based enforcement, has illustrated that ticket cameras typically increase, not decrease, the number of accidents at controlled intersections. The studies cited include those by various universities, the Institute of Transportation Engineers, Canada's Ministry of Transportation, Florida Public Health Review, and more. One of the most common findings relates to what is known as spillover effect. A behavioral economics term better described, I'd venture, as the whack a mole effect where you eliminate a problem which results in another problem taking its place. Here, the result of red light cameras causes drivers to react intensively to the possibility of a ticket by hitting the brakes early and hard. Rear-end injuries are thus dramatically increased. Other than increased injuries, repair costs, and overall paranoia at yet another manifestation of Big Brother, a report by the newspaper.com concluded that red light cameras increase injuries and insurance rates, and insurance, profits skyrocketed. Citizens in places where these cameras are used often are vociferous in opposing the policy. There are numerous issues of fairness, inconvenience, identification, timeliness, and ability to challenge. Even traffic synchronization is listed as being negatively affected as such might reduce revenues. Finally, there appears to be other, better alternatives, to wit, extended yellow and all red clearance interval. A CDC study noted that a recent meta-analysis found favorable results for red light cameras only in studies with weaker research designs. Skeptics or partisans might argue that one can pick and choose from the conflicting research. I would ask the reader to do an internet search for, say, red light camera research and judge for yourself. As far as the shortage of traffic officers, I note that the Florida statutes allow for the use of limited duty officers, generally paid less than full-duty officers or unpaid volunteers, who complete training for traffic investigations or enforcement. Mike Moses is a Charlotte County curmudgeon. He can be contacted at cccormudgeons at gmail.com. Mike Moses. Curmudgeon Corner. Copyright Suncoast Media Group, Inc. Questions some may have wondered while driving, are license plate cameras a gross invasion of privacy or are they necessary for our safety?
In recent years, South Florida law enforcement agencies have used the readers to keep track of suspicious activity on our roads. The thing is, the technology also gathers data stored for years, like where people have driven and whether they have a criminal record or not. CBS 4's Ted Scouten has the story. From the traffic on US 1 to the bustle of busy Miracle Mile, you may not realize that there are eyes on you that never blink. You can barely notice it. There is this hole here, and kind of obscured by the trees, there are the three cameras up there. When Raul Moss drives around his hometown of Coral Gables, he knows he's being watched and recorded. These cameras operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, day or night, doesn't matter. He's talking about the ALPR, or Automatic License Plate Recognition Cameras. There are 14 stationary, three portable, and two mounted in patrol cars in Coral Gables. I don't have any criminal background, any criminal records, but yet the government knows where I am, where I go, what I do, who I hang out with, who I talk to, who my doctor is. Moss is suing. He said in the first two years of operation, the ALPR snapped nearly 400 images of his tag. There are hundreds more now. He's troubled that those images are stored for three years. I am very concerned that that information is not being safeguarded properly. The only persons that see this information is the police department. Police Chief Ed Hudak said guardrails are in place. Nobody in my department can just unilaterally start following somebody through the ALPR camera system. It's one, it, it doesn't align itself to do that. Plus we have safeguards in play when the system is looked at in a historical nature. Here's where all the cameras are monitored in the Criminal Intelligence Center. We're seeing only the CCTV cameras. The ALPR system is off limits to us and nearly everyone else. It has to be about a case. There has to be a sign off to that where somebody is asked to do it. Chief Hudak says since the system was installed in 2017, there have been 280 requests to look at images and it's helped them solve numerous crimes. So we've solved carjackings, burglaries, missing persons, robberies, bank robberies, bank burglaries through our camera system. That's both camera and the ALPR system. This lawsuit is about uh, an American citizen's right to privacy in his hometown. Moss's attorney is with the new Civil Liberties Alliance. He calls this warrantless surveillance and a constitutional violation. Citizens have a right to privacy to the history of their movements, and it's the extended recording of the tracking of their movement that violates the expectation of privacy with respect to that history of movement. We check to see where these license plate readers are used in South Florida. In Miami-Dade, everywhere on the map that's shaded in green is where they are used in some way. There are just a few small communities where they're not. You can see them here on the map in red. In Broward, pretty much the same thing. The county has license plate readers, including all of the large cities. Then you have five smaller communities that don't use them. You can see them here also in red. It gives you a good indication that when you're driving, chances are there are eyes on you. Ted Scouten, CBS 4 News Tonight. Well, Moss lost his case in Miami-Dade Court. It's now making its way through the District Court of Appeals.